Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jazz Atwell, Manitoba's Deputy Chief Provincial Public Health Officer. Today, there is one additional death due to COVID-19. I want to offer my condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of this individual. The current five-day COVID-19 test positivity rate is 5.9% provincially and 6.5% in Winnipeg. As of 9.30 a.m. today, 85 new cases of the virus have been identified. Wednesday was a significant day in Manitoba when new public health orders were announced ahead of the July 1st milestone. These new orders will see significant restrictions reduced starting tomorrow, Saturday, June 26 at 12.01. Manitobans worked hard and made sacrifices to make this happen. I want to say thank you to all Manitobans for helping make this happen. To highlight a few changes that will take place tomorrow. Outdoor gathering sizes on private property will double to 10 persons and will allow outdoor visitors to briefly access homes for essential activities such as using a bathroom. Public outdoor gathering sizes will increase to 25 persons. Retail businesses to open with increased capacity at 25% to a limit of 250 persons with no restrictions on the number of household members permitted to shop together. Day camps will be able to operate for children of all ages as long as the maximum group size of any group of campers is 20 and no joint activities between groups takes place. A full list of what these orders look like can be found online at manitoba.ca and I encourage you all to review them. These reduced restrictions move Manitoba from level red critical to level orange restricted on the pandemic response system and are scheduled to expire at 12.01 a.m. Monday, August 2nd, the next milestone in the 4321 Great Summer Reopening Path. Please note that the change from red to orange does not currently impact visitation to acute care or long-term care facilities. Visitor access to acute care facilities is being gradually expanded as vaccination rates rise and COVID-19 case counts drop. Work is underway to develop essential care partner and visitor guidelines for provincial response level orange. At present, visitation for acute care will continue to occur as per the recently updated guidelines. Visitor access to long-term care facilities is also being gradually expanded as vaccination rates rise and COVID-19 case counts drop. There is no immediate change associated with the move to provincial response level orange. Visitation to long-term care, personal care homes will continue as per the recently updated guidelines. Manitobans need to continue to follow the fundamentals, including indoor mask use and physical distancing. This is still required. And getting vaccinated is more important than ever. Wednesday, it was announced that Manitobans who are fully immunized, two vaccine doses plus two weeks from the time of their second dose, will benefit from a number of exemptions like being able to visit fully vaccinated loved ones in PCHs or hospitals or travel domestically for essential and non-essential purposes outside of Manitoba without the requirement to self-isolate on their return. Getting vaccinated has the power to change your life. It has the power to start returning your life back to what it looked like before the pandemic. I'm aware of recent data that shows there were approximately 350 hospitalizations from June 1 to June 20th, and almost 80% of those admitted either had no vaccine or had one dose, but had a positive test result less than 14 days after they got their vaccine. Looking at the numbers alone tells me there's a deep value in getting the vaccine. I don't know the circumstances of those who were in hospital or why they were not vaccinated. And I share this today as an illustration of what getting the vaccine can do. Sharing this information makes a difference and shows positive changes can happen through vaccination. I'm sharing evidence of the impact and the power of vaccination. So book your appointment, either first or second dose, as soon as you can. Starting Monday, all Manitoba, starting today, sorry, all Manitobans are eligible to book their second dose. On Monday, June 28, the RBC Supersite will administer over 12,000 doses. Until now, the single largest clinic day in Canada was 10,470 at a Toronto clinic. 
Delivering 12,000 doses in a day at the super site demonstrates the efficiency of our delivery and that Manitobans are keen to get vaccinated and help end the pandemic in Manitoba. This is exciting news and we should feel good about the progress we are making against the virus. When people get vaccinated, the community spread of the virus is reduced, which means we're generating fewer cases, which means we're generating fewer hospitalizations and fewer deaths. When we get vaccinated, we protect those around us. We protect those who cannot get vaccinated for medical reasons. We also see weeks like this when restrictions are lifted and life gets to return to normal, even just a little. So make your vaccine appointment today. Thank you. And now I can take some questions. Thank you, doctor. A reminder to our reporters on the line, you will have one preliminary and one follow-up question. Up first this afternoon from the Winnipeg Free Press, Carol. Hi, Dr. Atwell. Uh, given the poor vaccination rate in Winkler and the arm of Stanley, why are we allowing the region to reopen with the rest of the province when it clearly hasn't met the vaccination target? Could you, could you explain from a medical perspective how this won't increase the spread in the province and, and why not have different rules for the spread? Yeah, so, you know, at the present time, we've got 72.2% of Manitobans with that first dose. We've got 32.9% of Manitobans with that second dose. You know, Manitobans are stepping up. They're getting that first dose. They're stepping up. They're getting that second dose as well. You know, day by day, we get immunization numbers for the entire province and, and down to some community numbers as well. And in, in each of those areas, those numbers continue to improve. They, they improve on a regular basis. Yes, we like to see higher vaccination rates, uh, you know, uh, all through the province. And some areas have um, um, less of a vaccine uptake compared to others. And there could be various reasons for that. Um, one could be access to the vaccine. Um, obviously, vaccine hesitancy could be another. So we are working with all those local partners we're working with you know leaders uh, medical professionals uh, leaders in the community related to vaccine hesitancy uh, and vaccine uptake and bringing vaccine closer to individuals as well so our distributive model is doing that as well you know through through uh, pharmacies and through medical clinics and we have those pop-up sites we have the super sites and we're actively you know participating and engaging more individuals and more um, groups to to bring vaccine to people so we're going to continue to see those uh, numbers rise uh, on the on the vaccination front both first and second doses so so manitoba collectively has done well with vaccine uptake and we're going to continue to see those numbers improve and uh, it, it was felt at this point that we could open up um, um, the restrictions and not have regional uh, differences. Uh, we, we know there are unintended consequences with those regional differences as well. We've experienced those with previous restrictions. Um, so, so at this point, uh, you know, we are uh, opening up Manitoba as a collective and we're going to monitor that situation on an ongoing basis to see where, again, uh, cases do generate and, and what we can do to mitigate that issue. Thank you for that. And given the outbreaks last year in Hutterite colonies, what is the province doing to ensure that the Hutterite population is being vaccinated? You've gone to nursing homes and jails. What about these congregate living situations? Can you just repeat the last seven or eight words of that, sorry? Yeah, j just, you know, the, the province has gone to nursing homes and jails uh, um, with fit teams and targeting vaccination there. What about the, the Hutterite uh, congregate living situation? Yeah, so we are, we, we have worked with uh, many different groups of people uh, in Manitoba, including Hutterite communities as well. We have continued to work with them as well. Uh, so we do engage communities uh, um, and representation from that from those communities as well. So we have a number of communities, even uh, outside of Hutterite communities, uh, other communities similar that we've engaged with as well. We're going to continue that engagement process, uh, provide education, promote vaccine uptake, and work with those leaders leaders to, to, again, if vaccines required to be brought closer to the community, they're going to work on doing that. If it's educational material, if it's, uh, if it's more about having a, a town hall with those communities, you know, we've done all those things and we're going to continue to do those things with all of those communities as well. From Global News, Anya. Good afternoon. On the province's website, it says we would consider moving to the orange level for three main reasons, one of them and arguably the most
crucial is that the healthcare system is able to manage COVID-19 case levels. Um, we still have people being treated outside of Manitoba right now. So why are we moving to level orange while our healthcare system is still strained? Yeah, so we looked at a number of indicators here. You know, our case counts are dropping. So, uh, you know, today's case numbers were roughly 84. Our trailing seven-day average is 97. That's a 45% decline on a trailing average from cases from this week to last week. For the last five weeks, we've been seeing, you know, 20 to 24%. And this last week, we saw 45% case number uh, case numbers decline. We looked at uh, net new admissions to hospital, net new admissions to ICU as well. Uh, and so all that's taken into account. And our hospitalization numbers continue to decrease uh, our ICU numbers continue to decrease the the net uh, uh, hospitalization number of new admissions on a daily basis is decreasing as well yes we do have a uh, 12 Manitoban still out of province uh, receiving ICU care and uh, you know we haven't sent anyone new outside of province for a period of time as well and, and those individuals it'll take some time for them to come back uh, we've talked about this before you know these are individuals in an ICU setting they'll likely come back once they're able to get out of that that ICU setting as well before they become repatriated. Right, our test positivity is decreasing. Uh, um, so there, there's a number of factors here, including our vaccine uptake. So, so we took all that into account to look at where we should be at from a PRS perspective. Again, you know, this doesn't mean uh, it's a free for all. Uh, we still have a concern. We still have issues and people still need to do what we're asking them to do. So the orders is one thing, right? The orders are law. Uh, the orders, um, people shouldn't try to skirt around the orders. There's a spirit to those orders as well. And just because you're able to do something, you know, maybe don't do 20 different things uh, that you weren't able to do before all of a sudden. You know, it, it, this is a gradual uh, uh, process here. We want people to partake in some of those other things that are important to them and socializing is important. Our orders are specific to outdoors activities in general. We, you know, we have open indoors as well in circumstances, but it is more outdoors where the risk of transmission is really low as well. So, you know, all those things have been taken into account, but we still need to practice those fundamentals. And it's, it's really important we still limit our contacts. So yes, we can interact with someone, but let's, let's Let's try to keep that distance. Uh, let's try to keep those numbers of contacts to a minimal amount uh, because, you know, the more contacts we have, uh, the increased risk there is to the system. And, and this is all about interactions. We have to remember this virus is all about interactions. So we need to limit those interactions still. And that's going to be an ongoing message from public health. So again, you got to practice the fundamentals, right? Stay at home if you're sick, if your household, uh, if one person is sick, your household should stay at home uh, until that test result comes back. Uh, you know, wash your hands regularly, uh, wear that mask on a regular basis, partake with public health in a case and contact investigation if that happens to happen. And, and again, follow that, you know, not only the, the letter of the orders, but also that spirit of the order. So taking all that into account, the messaging is still there in relation to there is risk. Uh, and we want people to still be vigilant in their interactions, you know. Uh, um, so it's thought that we could take that step down to that orange level at the present time. And there is less community transmission out there coupled with that as well. But we still do have to practice the fundamentals. Okay, great. Thanks for that. And speaking of interactions, uh, more and more people are reaching their two-week period post-second vaccination. So why do these fully vaccinated people not have some more exceptions right now, especially when it comes to, say, going to stay with family within the province if everyone there is also fully vaccinated? Correct. So, you know, we, we've got a number of people with one dose. Again, we still want that number to increase. We've got a number of people with two doses as well. And we still need a lot more people to get that second dose as well to provide greater protection. Uh, and when you have those two doses, you're two weeks past that second dose. I mean, there is really good vaccine efficacy, meaning the vaccine does protect you, but there is still some risk there. Uh, vaccines aren't 100%. So, you know, with two doses, two weeks after that second dose, we know we're likely 90% effective in preventing a COVID infection. Infection. But again, the more interactions we have, the more close, prolonged indoor contact we have can potentially cause some risk. And, and, and we still have to get our case numbers down, right? So our system is still busy, our healthcare system's busy, and we still haven't had enough Manitobans vaccinated uh, from a first dose perspective and a second dose perspective to allow a greater amount of interaction even amongst those vaccinated. So uh, we didn't want to open it up wide. 
This is a stepwise progression that we're allowing this in controlled situations. And again, we're going to continue to monitor that, right? So, so these orders are in effect until uh, uh, you know um, August long, uh, but we're going to continue to monitor the situation all the way through to see what our next steps could be. From the Brandon Sun, Kimberly. Good afternoon, doctor. Um, so the province is offering incentives, um, and my question is, how helpful are those incentives if people can't see the benefit of it? For example, this Saturday, um, you know, things are relaxing. People who are doubly vaccinated can eat in a restaurant together, but people are having difficulties getting access to their cards. So how effective are those incentives if people can't have proof of their vaccination on it? Yeah, so there's lots of incentives here on an outdoor basis as well. So we'll, we'll talk about everything. So on the outdoor side, you know, we've expanded that ability to, to interact outdoors at private residences and public places. Uh, you know, that number's doubled uh, on a private residence side. That allows a lot of interaction. It's a, it's a beautiful summer so far. The nights are beautiful. It's, it's nice being outside, being able to interact. Uh, on the indoor side, obviously, we, you know, the households are able to still get together. On the patios in restaurants, though, you don't require that immunization. Uh, but to sit indoors, you do do require that immunization for those uh, who are vaccine eligible outside of the household as well. And the cards are are that that issue with the cards is being worked through. I, I know there was some uh, some issues some people had in relation to accessing that information or getting that card. Uh, vaccine records could also be you know printed out, so you know that could be carried with an individual as well if, if need be if they weren't able to access that card. And again, we're going to continue to monitor this situation. Uh, this again, this is our first step in using something like a card and. and looking at vaccination status to allow for certain types of interactions to happen. And we're going to continue to learn from this. Obviously, every, everything, every time we do something new, there's a bit of, a bit of something to learn. And there's always, uh, um, you know, a, a, essentially a little bit of a problem that can develop. So, you know, we're dealing with that problem that should be dealt with rather quickly. And then we're going to take a look at uh, what we can do in the future uh, with that vaccine card as well. So there are some things, you, you know, from an interaction basis, we're concerned about from a public health perspective. So the only way for, for people to partake in those activities at the present time or in the next little bit of time will be with, you know, with vaccination, but with immunization, with being fully immunized. So we are working towards um, fixing the problem that's there and that's being addressed right now and also looking at where this could take us over the next few weeks' time. Okay, thank you for that. Um, my second question is with the, um, the cases when they were at their highest point and we were... Uh, the province was uh, sending patients to rural hospitals and personal care homes. I'm just wondering how many people um, were actually transferred to these locations and um, what's the province's plan in keeping those rural beds uh, open for uh, COVID patients? Yeah, so I think a lot of Manitoba sacrificed. You know, Manitoba sacrificed from a restrictions perspective. Those who required care, you know, had to be shuffled around throughout the province to to make room for those who had COVID to be closer to a, like a tertiary care facility to uh, enable us to you know utilize our ICUs to have people working in ICUs, and that that meant those in hospitals sometimes for other reasons had to be moved to different facilities. It wasn't just unique to Manitoba here, and and I do want to thank all Manitobans for. Uh, um, for, for, for doing their part. And I understand there was challenges there as well. And, um, you know, I think shared health is working on this. And I believe, you know, any particulars related to total numbers or, or processes in place needs to be answered by shared health. I just don't have all the details on that. Uh, but that is some of the unintended consequences of, of having an acute care system that gets overwhelmed. Uh, so we do have to be aware of that as well. From CJOB, Shane. Uh, thanks for taking our call, uh, Dr. Atwell. Um, I'm just wondering uh, maybe if I could get a little bit more specific on, on what this move to orange means. Is What specifically changes for Manitobans, if anything? And then is it, is it, if, it, if it is just ceremonial, does it, does it do anything for health officials? Does it give you any extra levers as far as uh, restrictions or, or health orders going forward? Yeah, um, you know, it, it, it's about a little bit about messaging. Uh, um, you know, things have gotten a little bit better. Uh, there's a little bit less community transmission out there. Our case numbers are decreasing. Uh, we're, we're in a little bit better spot than we were when we were in red. 
Uh, it is tied into, you know, some other things that could happen from a, a, a probably a visitation perspective, and, and, and those things are still being worked on as well. Um, but at the end of the day, like we, we still need to, again, practice those fundamentals and it's going to be vitally important. Uh, and I think this really needs to be acknowledged and written, printed, that we continue to practice those fundamentals. You know, we are in a, uh, um, um, and in, we're in a point in time here where we still have to get our case numbers down. You know, we don't want our case numbers to plateau even at this number. We need to keep driving these numbers down. I want to see another 25 or 45 percent decrease next week and the week after and the week after that. We need these case numbers to come down. And that's going to happen by Manitobans practicing the fundamentals, by adhering uh, to the messaging, by adhering to the orders. So that does involve, again, you know, when you are sick, go get tested, self-isolate at home, have your household wait with you until that test result comes back. Um, you know, it means practicing the fundamentals. Avoid carpooling if you can, right? Avoid extra interaction. So you're able to do more. You might be able to do more with people, but you still want to limit those interactions. Um, and that'll help drive those case numbers down. So, so those fundamentals uh, still need to be followed. Thanks, I appreciate that. Um, I guess my next question, uh, switching gears a little bit to Boarding event. The the public health orders that came out today look like um, with with uh, approval from how public health um, fans are going to be allowed to watch uh, sporting events such as bombers if they're double vaccinated. I, but we're not hearing if there's going to be a capacity limit on on how many fans would be allowed in at IG Field uh, for that first game in August. I'm wondering if, if a decision's been made on that. Yeah, so we're working with different organizations in relation to, let's say, what a large event can look like. Um, so any any large event is allowed under the orders, per se, but it needs public health approval. So that approval process will take a look at capacity limits, uh, and obviously things will look different, uh, you know, next week versus what that capacity limit might look like four weeks from now. And it all depends, again, how Manitobans are doing in relation to getting those case numbers down and getting that vaccine rate up. So we'll work with these uh, organizations. Uh, you know, you mentioned the bombers, or, or, or uh, you know, maybe in the fall it's hockey or, or some other uh, sporting activity or performing arts theater group who wants an event outside to to look at what can be done. Uh, you know what those capacity limits uh, could look like, uh, depending on the situation. So there's nothing explicit in the orders, but that'll be done with public health and that organization uh, together. From the Winnipeg Sun, Scott. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Atwell. Um, one part of the orders um, that still remains for restaurants is having to order a meal if you want to order uh, you know, an alcoholic beverage. Why, why is that uh, still in place? Well, you know, we... We want people to to be able to go out to eat to eat at a restaurant to get together to socialize right to have that uh, opportunity. Um, you know, we we just can't open everything up where everyone's able to do exactly what they desire to do. I mean, there are some unintended consequences uh, potentially of uh, consuming alcohol. It it it. Um, um, can cause a little bit of disinhibition in some individuals, right? So your behavior can change with alcohol consumption as well. So, so it's not for the act of, you know, just going out and having a drink or drinks, you know, it's the act of, you know, uh, um, getting a meal, uh, getting together, socializing a little bit, maybe having one drink, which shouldn't cause someone to be disinhibited per se, uh, but that way you have more control over, over behavior. Uh, so, so again, this virus, uh, you know, likes those interactions. We still want to behave, so we're limiting those interactions, and we still want processes in place to to aid in that as well. All right, thanks for that. Um, you kind of mentioned hockey games in your uh, in, in response to Shane's question. I mean, we're still three months out from the next NHL season, but is it trending towards? Um, you know, allowing fully vaccinated people into, um, I guess it's called Canada Life Center now, uh, downtown in Winnipeg. Yeah, so again, you know, we're, we're going to be able to do some things right now with those who are fully vaccinated, right? If, if, um, if we want an event to occur, uh, we, we just can't have vaccinated and unvaccinated people mixed together right now. It poses too much risk. Um, so right now we're, we're taking those steps to say, what can we open? 
what can we do if everyone's fully vaccinated? Otherwise, it just that thing can't happen. That event, whatever it is, that just can't happen. So we're going through that process right now. We're taking those steps toward that. We're going to learn from that as well. And obviously, you know, it's hard to speak to two to three months down the road. The goal is for us to hit those vaccine targets. We need we need people getting vaccinated. We need a lot of dose ones, right? We still need more people getting their first dose. Manitobans, again, have stepped up great, uh, but we still need to find those who are wanting a vaccine. It may be hard for them to get that vaccine, get them that first dose. For those who got their first dose, maybe them to get that second dose to to come to a point where we might get to that herd immunity, where again, we, you know, we have protected our community with the actions of getting that double dose of vaccine. And that allow us, you know, will allow us to do a lot more. Um, so, so it's hard to predict three months down the road. I, I think as Manitobans, and, and again, they are doing it. We want, we want them, and we want them to continue to get that vaccine. You know, book your second dose uh, if you've already got your first, uh, and book your first dose if you haven't gotten your first. Go to a walk-in, uh, go to a walk-up site, uh, do what you can to get that vaccine. Uh, and again, you know, this is about seeing what we can do, what we can open. And right now for large events, it will be for those who are fully immunized to partake in those activities. From CBC Manitoba, Ian. Good afternoon, Dr. Atwell. Um, in the past, whenever we've opened up restrictions, we have anticipated an increase in cases. Is that anticipated this time? And if so, you know, sort of what numbers are we anticipating? Challenging question to answer. You know, it's with the uh, vaccine uptake, the amount of vaccine that has been uptaken and, and that's going to continue to uptake will play a role in that. So that's one significant variable there. Uh, we'll likely see some cases generated just because we are going to see some greater interactions with the individuals. And this is where, again, we're stressing to people, practice those fundamentals. It's still important to limit those contacts, limit those interactions, and stay at home and get tested when you are sick. So, you know, it's really hard to predict that. Yeah, our, our case numbers are dropping quite substantially on a week-to-week -week basis. Again, I, I foresee a greater decline over the next one to two weeks. Um, and hopefully we continue that because even in two weeks' time, we're probably going to have another couple hundred thousand people with extra doses in them, whether it's their first dose or a couple hundred thousand with that extra second dose as well. Um, cases generate because of interactions. Right, uh, vaccines protect even despite interactions. So again, you know, Manitobans uh, can continue to prevent case generation, uh, and that's important uh, by limiting those interactions as well. And even with vaccines, we have to remember even those who are doubly vaxxed might end up getting an infection. You might end up being a case, and that counts as a case. But we know those who are even with one dose, uh, uh, but specifically with two doses, your risk of having a severe outcome, a risk of ending up in a hospital or ICU is very, very minimal. Very minimal, right? So you might end up being a case, but despite being a case, you might likely not generate a hospitalization or ICU compared to not being vaccinated at all. So, so that's important to remember as well. So it's not just about case generation, uh, but we're going to have that as one indicator. Uh, but we need to continue to look at the impacts of case generation on the acute care system um, in, in the future in the world of more people being vaccinated. Thank you. And uh, there's, you know, still a number of establishments and businesses that still ask people if they've traveled outside of Manitoba in the last 14 days, and if they have, they cannot get in. But now we have a lot of people that are fully vaccinated. Um, you know, now the province is allow allowing people to sort of travel uh, for non-essential purposes. So will there be some level of guidance for, for these businesses to perhaps stop doing that? So again, this is about protecting Manitoba. So if we want to continue to have a good opening, like we still need to adhere to those orders. So the orders are exempting those who are fully vaccinated two weeks past their second dose, uh, that they don't have to self-isolate. So, you know, if someone is coming into your business or, you, you know, you're used to asking that question, I would recommend continue to ask that question. You know, it's important that people, uh, the reason why that question is being asked is obviously people probably weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing before, right? Because if they were supposed to be doing what they were doing before, they wouldn't be out. They wouldn't be, uh, you know, out and about trying to get into someplace. They'd be self-isolating at home. And there are some exceptions there, don't get me wrong. Um, but, but it's not a harmful question to ask to continue that vigilance. You know, we need to continue to be vigilant against this virus. 
Uh, so make no mistake about that. This is still important to practice those fundamentals, to, to uh, listen to, to adhere to not only the letter of the order, but also the spirit of the order as well. So I, I would, if, if businesses are doing that, if, if, if that's a, a principle you've applied to your business, which I think is good, continue to do so. From CTV Winnipeg, Mason. Hi there. If Manitoba keeps hitting its vaccination targets, how likely is a fourth wave? Could it happen with the prolonged indoor contact that comes with winter, or would a variant of concern more resistance to the vaccine need to take hold of the province? Yeah, so, you know, the greater vaccine uptake we have with two doses, it lessens the risk of a fourth wave. Barring again, you know, we get some variant with vaccine escape, but with what's known about all the variants right now, all the variants of concern is two doses is very protective. You know, we're, we're going to see likely some increased case numbers in the fall. You know, how that looks, we still have to understand that. Uh, so from modeling, we'll understand that. Uh, and we also have to incorporate other things here. So, so, you know, we have other viruses that we haven't seen. This last year, we really never saw any uh, what's called RSV, a respiratory syncytial virus. We never saw rhinovirus, really never saw influenza as well, because there were so many measures put in place and restrictions on individuals to prevent those interactions. Not only did it prevent COVID, uh, but it prevented all those other viruses quite well as well. Um, so, so the fall will be something that we need to learn about still a lot more. And a lot of it will be dependent on our second dose uptake for COVID specific illness. Uh, but then we have to learn about how, you know, those other viruses will impact respiratory symptoms, causing respiratory symptoms and causing viral illnesses. So it, it's too early to really, um, really be aware of how that will look. It's definitely going to be busy. We're going to have those other viruses out there. The degree to which and, and how that looks, we'll have a better idea of that as more time goes on. Yeah, Because again, we're going to have more uh, uh, lessons learned from other jurisdictions that will experience this you know, seasonally a little bit before we do. And then also by that point, we'll have further vaccine uptake as well. Uh, so, so, But we do expect the fall to be busy with respiratory viruses. Thanks. And uh, in Alberta's reopening plan, people won't have to wear masks starting Canada Day. Do you see that happening for Manitobans this summer? And if it does, would you recommend people still wear them in future crowds like football games or concerts? Yeah, so we're continuing to look at our recommendations and our messaging. Um, you know, at this point, we haven't changed uh, that for the mask side. And we're going to continue to look at that. And I think, again, a lot of this depends on, on vaccine uptake. And, and what's circulating. Um, so, you know, as public health uh, gets new evidence, as our risk diminishes with, you know, second dose uptake and, and continued first dose uptake as well, we'll, we'll, we'll be addressing that uh, with the best evidence that's available. Our final reporter this afternoon from CHVN, Taylor. Hi, good afternoon. A lot of fully vaccinated Manitobas might be... Uh, tempted to, you know, not follow these health orders, uh, what is their risk and what is your message to those who decide to do that? Yeah, so, you know, we, we still have lots of people who aren't fully vaccinated. You know, we have lots of people with just one dose and we have some people with no doses of vaccine. If Manitoba wants to continue to see uh, case numbers drop and our ability, to, again, to meet targets uh, and not overwhelm our acute care system, you know, we still need to practice those fundamentals. We still want to be able to open more and do more. And this is that first step that we're into right now, right? This is that first foray. Let's not put that at risk because that's what we're end up going to do. We're going to put things at risk if we don't follow the orders uh, from the letter of the order, if we don't follow the spirit of that order, and if we don't follow that public health messaging. So I don't think Manitobans want to put that at risk. But, but think about Think about that with every interaction you have. Again, we need to still limit those interactions and practice those fundamentals. So really, really focus on that. I know it's going to be hard. You know, we want to interact with people. We're going to be allowed to interact a little bit more. But, but continue to have that voice in your head to, to limit those interactions and, and limit the number of things that you're doing. Yes, you're able to do more. Doesn't mean you maximize that on a daily basis. Enjoy more. Enjoy those things you haven't been able to do that you wanted to do for months, uh, but still limit it and limit some of those interactions as well. And that'll allow us to take that next step 
and the next step there afterwards. Thanks. And over the past year and a half, there's been a lot of yo-yoing between opening and closing. I know that's not something the province wants to do, um, but what re- reassurances can you give Manitobans and businesses that this won't happen? It's hard to predict the future. You know, this is a novel virus. Uh, we've learned a lot of things from it. And then the virus changed on us. We learned a lot of more things from it, and it continues to change and evolve. We've got greater tools in play here to mitigate uh, case generation, to mitigate, uh, you know, severe outcomes. But again, you know, we, we do need people to, to limit those interactions and follow the fundamentals. There's always that chance things get worse again. Uh, and that wouldn't be just unique to Manitoba if things change, right? We're, we're going to learn again from other jurisdictions. We always look at the science every day, not from just only Manitoba, but from Canada, from, from the U.S., from other countries around the world as well. So there's no way of saying it'll never happen. But the more we do now, the more people that get vaccinated, the more that we adhere to the messaging and the, and the orders, the greater chance there is of that not happening. And, and I think people uh, are aware of that and need to keep that in mind and uh, uh, really, again, you know, practice the fundamentals. Thank you, Doctor. This concludes today's media briefing.